Hello, wrestling fans. How are you? Haley, no weapon. NXT for May the 28th, 2024. Honestly, this show was terrible to watch. Um, it, uh, it was just bad. The opening match was Tatum Paxi versus Mia Yim with the singer debut of Sexy Red. I don't even know who the hell she is. Um, apparently, she's going to be singing at the pay per view battleground. Um, so these, the two women faced off. Terrible match. They spent maybe three minutes between the Irish whipping each other into the corners of ropes. Like, that was it. And then Miam hit the eat defeat for the one, two, three. Tina Paxi, ever since all the Valkyries were caught in the main roster, she's just getting buried. Tina Paxi needed this win a lot more than goddamn Miam. The wrong one won that match. Rich Holland took on Roddy Osborne with Chase U people at ringside. I did enjoy this match. Um, I just wish that it went longer than it did. Ridge, all he did start, kept doing was like head knock takedowns, chin lock takedowns, arm drag takedowns, keeping the high flyer, Riley Osborne grounded. Finally, Riley Osborne got out, got up at me, jump up drop kick, jump up in Zagiri kick, knock down Ridge Hall then, uh, shoot start press. Um, then Ridge, at one point, speared him to the outside, and then he went to foam at the still step, feet hill, told Ridge not to do that. Rage instead then tossed Riley Osborne back in the ring. He got back in the ring. Riley Osborne ran, hit a super kick, then started running, getting speed going. Rage caught him, power slam for the one, two, three. After the match, Riley Osborne flipped off Rage Hall, then refused to shake the hand, and left with Duke Hudson. Um, commercials back live. Chase U's backstage arguing. Fia Hill and Chase want to know why. Riley Osborne and Duke left. And Riley said, Rich Holland doesn't deserve to be a part of our stable. And Duke agreed with him. So they walked away. Fia Hill, her boyfriend's Riley Osborne. So she's kind of conflicted because she also, you know, wants to keep Chase University to get us a stable. All five of them. Rich, uh, again, apologized and all that. And then he said he appreciated Chase getting the match book last week against Riley Osborne, where last week on the show, Riley Osborne was the one that went up to the walk's daughter to request the match. So, made no sense, right? It just goes to show they're still struggling what to do with Ridge Hall then there. Uh, the OC took on Malachi and Doofus. Uh, Malachi and Doofus hit stereo double team drop kicks on both members of the OC. Um, uh, then Galdas Anderson isolated Malachi in their corner. Body shots in the corner. Uppercuts in the corner. Snap suplex out of the corner. The Doofus tagged in. Did a running bulldog on Luke Gallows. Closed on Carl Anderson to the outside. Had out a running bulldog on Luke Gallows. Went to pick up the win. Anderson broke up the pin. The Magic Killer. One, two, three. Your winner's the OC. It was like a three minute match. Uh, after the match, Nathan Fraser Exion ran out to get paid back. On the OC, attacked him last week, hit stereo drop kicks him to the outside. Then Nathan Fraser said, "Look, if you wanted a goddamn chance at the tag team championships, all you had to do was come ask us. You didn't have to goddamn attack us after our match last week against Luca and Top Stacks and beat us up at Battleground. You'll get your goddamn chance." And then Exion said, "But fair warning." We're going to kick your asses now. So, at Battleground, it's going to be the OC versus Nathan Frazier and Exion for the Tag Team Championships. That should be one hell of a very good match. Lola Vice within like two minutes defeated Grace. After the match, Shayna Baszler came out to try to get a piece of Lola Vice, but The Rock's daughter ordered security officials to run down to separate them. Uh, Dante Chan with Mr. Stone had a rematch against Lessis King. Bow rang. Within seconds, Dante Chan rolled up. One, two, three. Your winner. Like, seriously? The match last week went a lot longer than this one did. After the match, Lexus King pulled Dante Chan to the outside, hit the swing of neck breaker on the outside, and Stone did absolutely nothing to help his new protege out. He just stood there, let the move get happen to him. Way to go, Stone. You're a great manager there, man. Um, we had the final qualifier win of his match. Um, Jordan took on. Newcomer Sinclair. Uh, Sinclair did an awesome Andre takedown into an X Factor. And then they did like a back and forth roll ups. 
It was like a dozen times they kept reversing each other's pin attempts. Then Jordan hit a fisherman suplex, a back body drop, jumped off the top ropes, but like a moonsault for the one, two, three. Jordan advances. I had a quick win. I had a quick match. All night, all these matches, I bet you any of them maybe lasted more than five minutes. I'd be shocked. Your main event was Trick Williams and Javon Evans. It was supposed to be against Mike Coffey and Wolfgang because they advertised it last week, but instead it was Mike Coffey and Joe Coffey. And this main event pissed me off because the bell rang. Trick did a flapjack on Mike Coffey. Javon Evans hit a corkscrew splash on the outside on Joe Coffey. And then three minutes later, Trick had run a knee onto my coffee for one to three. Like, what the hell? Like, that's your main event? Okay. Um, Gallus, two weeks ago, they showed up, started attacking people, beating everybody up. And then this week, they just knew it was punching bags. Like, man, I just kind of downgraded how, man, how much of a danger, how much of a threat they are as a stable NXT. Yeah, we're going to go around. We're going to. Beat up Arvar. We're going to kick Josh Briggs' ass. We're going to beat up Wesley. We're going to beat up Javon Evans. We're going to beat up Trick. And then we're going to lose within three minutes. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Smart thing in there, Rock's daughter. Yep. Smart book in there, gal. Uh, there you have it for matches. Like, honestly, the only match even worth watching was Rich Holland and Ron Osborne. That's down here something right there. Um, Next week, you got Tony the Don versus Cap. One-on-one. -on -one. Uh, also, it's... Thea Hill versus Jasmine. Um, and there's a shocker. Roxanne Perez came out and she demanded to know who she was defending her championship against at Battleground. The Rock started last week called Adam Pierce on the cell phone and said, Can I bowl someone from your roster to challenge Roxanne? And he said yes. And it was Jordan Grace from TNA, the current Knockouts champion. Like, that was a holy shit moment. That I did not see coming. So, she went after Roxanne. Roxanne, of course, took off through the crowd. Um, and then Jordan Grace is going to have her debut match next week against this one of my new who the hell her name is. Um, that's just going to be a squash match. And so, what confuses me is, A, Jordan Grace is on TNA. Two... She ain't a member of the goddamn Raw roster, so why the hell did Rockstar last week call Adam Pierce to ask to have someone brought from his show to her show for the title match? That was the other thing that was confusing, right? Uh, Josh Briggs, Sean Spears had a segment backstage. Nothing interesting there happened at all. Uh, Charlie Dempsey told Cap and Bones that he's the leader of the group since Gulak was released. He wants the Heritage Cup trophy back. And then Cap challenged Tony the Dawn to a match next week. But they never really clarified that for the Cup or not. Um, and then this was also an interesting segment. After the main event, Trick Williams was approached by Les Legend. She said, did you attack Noam Dar three weeks ago? He said, no, I did not. She said, did you attack Masu? Apparently Masu was attacked. In the opening show, they never even show nothing. They just announced it, like, the main event, like commentary. Oh, yeah, Masu was attacked backstage in the opening show. Show the backstage attack so we know ahead of time that happened. Not 30 seconds before the show ends. Um, he said no. Um, she asked Javon Evans. He, of course, denied that he was the one that attacked her, man, or her, her members of her group. And then suddenly... From AEW, Ethan Page debuted on NXT, laid out Javon Evans, beat the shit out of Trick Williams, held up the championships, and I'm the guy that took out the other two guys in metaphor. Of all the people to sign from AEW, Ethan Page. That guy is so terrible. He was in TNA as a member of the North with Joss Alexander, and TNA fired him because... One, he no-showed events. Two, he's terrible in the ring. See, AEW hired him. He was there for three years on the contract, and he maybe had maybe 12 matches out of the three years he was there. And his win-loss record is one-sided to the loss side. So that's why AEW got rid of him, because, again, he was missing events and shows. 
So I guess WWE is going to try the luck with them. Like, NXT was terrible this week, folks. Like, man, if you haven't watched it, don't bother because you ain't missing nothing great at all. Uh, a lot of stuff that happened last week, that happened this week, made no sense. The only thing I do like is that at Battleground, you're going to have Shayna Baszler versus Lola Vice in an underground match, MMA style. You got the OC versus Nate Fraser and Exion now for the Tag Team Championships. Oh, yes. <laughs> I forgot about this one. Uma Fima came out. And say he refuses to face Joe Coffey Wesley at Battleground in a triple vet match. He said, I am done defending my championship in multi man matchups. Every pay per view, nine times out of ten, that championship is defended in a triple threat or fail forward or something like that. So the Rock Starter came out and said, Okay, we'll have Joe Coffey versus Wesley. The winner will face you one on one. Then later on in the show, she approaches Uma Fima backstage and says it's a triple threat match. Make up your goddamn mind. And I still don't understand how Wesley is getting an opportunity. Because last week, when Joe Coffey fell on top of Uma Fima, he fell on top of him. Which makes sense, he got the one, two, three. Wesley fell on top of the guy's leg, knees. When uh, anybody, comment below if you know anybody that can get a pinfall victory by covering and laying over somebody's knees. Please let me know, because there's no logic whatsoever why Wesley's in this match. It should just be Uma Fima versus Joe Coffey. Yeah, NXT was hard to watch, folks. Stay safe, everybody. Too sweet. Bye.